So, cosmic confusion. Um, this I actually wrote a bunch of stuff on this for my PhD, which is how. And uh, when I after publishing the papers for my PhD, I got invited by Scientific American to write um, a feature article for them about misconceptions on the Big Bang. Um, and so a lot of the, if you want more information on this stuff, I guess actually it's not more information, it's the distilled information is uh, there's a Scientific American article um, about this. Uh, okay, so metrics. Very basics, when you're talking about homo a homogeneous isotropic space, uh, the metric that you that is most commonly used is Frieden robertson walker metric. Uh, so you've got the line element, you've got time, you've got uh, the spherical coordinates here, spatial coordinates, and a scale factor that lets you expand and contract those uh, coordinates. So the pic when we describe the expanding universe, this chi here is the co-moving coordinate. Galaxies sit still with respect to co-moving coordinates, and all of the expansion is taken into a, a account by the, the scale factor. In reality, that's not entirely the case. Galaxies have small peculiar motions, so any peculiar velocities that are not just the expansion of the universe uh, come in terms of changes in their co-moving position. So we split up the expansion from the movement of things within the expansion. So if you just take the, ditch these um, angular terms, just take the radial ones. Radially, your line element is a c squared dt squared, scale factor squared times the decomoving coordinate squared. Uh, you can think of it this way, this is one of the um, visualizations where you have the co-moving coordinate is it actually acts as an angle in this um, sense here. You can see this SK term is the, uh, it's either a sine, just nothing, or um, sync, depending on whether you have a closed, flat, or open, or hyperbolic geometry of space-time. So you can see it's acting like an angle in here. Yeah, so you can visualize it here so that the distance between any two objects is actually given by r times chi. So for a photon, ds equals zero. Uh, and you end up with, if you rearrange this, you end up noticing that c, the speed of light, is the scale factor times d chi dt. So any, the photon is moving through co-moving space, which is, it has a peculiar velocity. It's not part of the expansion velocity. Uh, and if you instead cut along a constant time slice, that's so, you know, in uh, relativity you have an arbitrary choice of what time coordinates you use, basically. So here we've chosen a particular time uh, coordinate system and it's if you take a dt equals zero, that's when you get that the distance is the scale factor times the co-moving coordinate. Uh, Velocity, you can actually do just a simple differential here and you get the two component velocity here where you've got the part that's due to the um, change in R and the part that's due to the change in the co-moving coordinate. Okay, so there's two things that you need when describing the expansion of the universe. One, you need that coordinate system, you have homogeneous isotropic space. Secondly, you have to have something to describe the dynamics, how the velocities change with time. And so that, for that, you need general relativity. You need to know the um, stress-energy momentum tensor, uh, the contents of space-time determine how that expansion uh, changes with time. So if you want to calculate the scale factor and how that changes, uh, you just use your general relativistic uh, equations. So I'm not going to go through these in detail, the, um, but you can go through with symmetry. You find that there's only a few non-vanishing Christoffel symbols in the um, that you need to include, uh, and when you plug these all in, what you get out is Friedman's equations. Uh, the equation that I'm showing here is the Hubble parameter, which is uh, the it's dr dt divided by r. So it's the it's the basically it's the rate of the expansion of the universe divided by the relative size of the universe. Um, so the Hubble parameter is velocity is proportional to distance in the expanding universe and the proportionality factor is h. Um, here what the expansion rate depends on is things like the matter density, uh, the curvature of the universe um, and anything that might be a dark energy or a cosmological constant. So this is stuff that, that pulls, uh, this is stuff that pushes, uh, this is the curvature and there are 
other possible terms like radiation, for example, that are less important than these in the, in the actual practicalities of the expansion of the universe. Okay, so I noted before that there's two types of velocity. If you have this, um, the two differential uh, parts of the velocity, you, we split it up into recession velocity and peculiar velocity. So the recession velocity part is just whenever you have a change in R. And I'm going through this in some detail just because uh, you can see that if you have that the recession velocity is R dot chi, if you just rearrange that dividing by R and multiplying by R, that becomes, you can see how that becomes the familiar Hubble constant times distance. What do you need to do to your velocities if you have recession velocities that are faster than the speed of light? Uh, do you need special relativistic corrections on those? Is there some different feature that you have to take into account from general relativity? Uh, well, when faced with uh, a question uh, like this, I'd like to go back to the, you know, the most reliable sources uh, that I possibly can. Um, so, for example, you can go back to Monty Python, <laughs> uh, and they have a song about the expansion of the universe in which this is mentioned. So, the song goes like this, the universe itself keeps on expanding and expanding in all of the directions it can whiz. As fast as it can go, that's the speed of light, you know. 12 million miles a minute, that's the fastest speed there is. Okay, so, I hate to tell you, but Monty Python got something wrong here. Yeah. This is not... The uh, expansion of space is not limited to the speed of light, and you don't need any special relativistic corrections for recession velocities. The recession velocity can perfectly happily, happily go uh, faster than the speed of light. It doesn't violate any relativistic um, results, uh, and so let me try and uh, explain why. Uh, firstly, velocity is really important to realise is a coordinate dependent property. It depends on how you've defined your distances and how you've defined your times. Uh, the, the pre pre when we, whenever we talk about distances in astronomy, we typically speak in redshifts, not actually in distances, because redshift is the thing that's measurable. It's un unambiguous. For any particular redshift, you can define an angular diameter distance, a luminosity distance, a uh, speed of light distance, a um, proper distance. There's a whole bunch of different numbers that you can put for distance if we're all the same redshift. Um, we use the, the coordinates that we use to describe the expanding space are Friedman Robertson Walker coordinates. So those that metric that I showed. And now that metric is necessary if you want your space to be homogeneous and isotropic. You can choose a different coordinate system in which your space is no longer homogeneous and isotropic. You have a radially varying density, for example. Um, and your, but the problem with that is that uh, co-moving observers no longer would um, agree on times. So the Freedom Robinson Walker, the time coordinate that's used there, is the time coordinate for uh, if, you ha if you're co-moving with the expansion of space and you just watch watched your wristwatch, time, that's how time marches on. It's the coordinate, it's the coordinate time of co-moving observers. Um, but that's not the, the uh, time that we'd use if you were doing special relativistic transformations between all of your observers, because this is a, a constant time, and you know that uh, time is relative. So if something's moving away uh, or moving away faster, you would have different times for all of those objects. And so by saying that the, everybody in all the co-moving observers in the universe have a common time coordinate, that we all agree on the age of the universe, that's putting a restriction on the time that means that special relativistic limits don't apply. So it's actually the fact that recession velocities can exceed the speed of light is actually a, a, um, a peculiarity of our choice of coordinate system. Um, you can choose other metrics. For example, if you use conformal time, the scale factor comes outside of this entire thing, not just outside of the spatial coordinates, but outside of the temporal coordinates as well. And then you are in a situation where your the speed of light limit is restored again because of your definition redefinition of time. Okay, so it's important to understand the implications of our coordinate choice. So yes, recession velocities can exceed the speed of light, but this isn't a problem uh, because, firstly, nothing ever overtakes a photon. So if you shine a beam of light towards receding galaxies, 
just even though you've you've said those galaxies can be receding faster than the speed of light, it's not change. Nothing is ever changing and overtaking a photon. If you emit a photon from one of those distant galaxies, um, say that a galaxy that's receding at the speed of light, then the photon that you emit away from us would be travelling at twice the speed of light in the coordinate system that we've chosen. But with respect to the local observers, with respect to everyone that that photon is passing, that photon is always travelling at C. So photons are only expected to travel at the speed of light in the frame of the um, uh, inertial frame of the um, observers that they're passing. Does that make sense? So nothing ever overtakes a photon. Everyone always observes photons to be travelling at C. So there's no um, violation of special relativity there. And nothing proceeds faster than the speed of light in any inertial frame. There is no global inertial frame in which all of the galaxies are moving. Uh, and yes, there exist met metrics that do not have superluminal recession. 